But switching over, uh, Paul, what do you think? How do you feel? I just feel right. Whoever said that Rashford is our player of the season, uh, should just go and take a shower. <laughs> uh. <laughs> London forever, whatever the weather, <laughs> these streets are our own. My heart will leave you never, my blood will forever <laughs> run through the stone. Arsenal! Good morning, guys. Hello there. Welcome to another episode of Football Kaki. I'm joined by my brothers uh, f- uh, from Football Kaki, Paul and Eldek. How up, are guys? you doing? Oh. Wow. All right, all right. Yeah, all is good. All is good. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was. A, it, was a, it was a good game. Yes. It was a good game. But as the host of this show, uh, wow, I feel I'm I'm on the sadder side today. Mm. <laughs> Nothing to be said about game. Yeah. Yeah, dude. But once again, guys, thank you. We are the football khaki, and once again, oh, we got a lot to unpack today. But before we go into all of that, we just want to acknowledge everybody for listening in. Thank you for giving us a try, giving us a listen, and listening to just three boys who love talking about this beautiful game. So now, today, we're going to review the Man United and Arsenal game. Wow, boys. What a game. Let's do it. A lot of talking points, a lot of interesting things. Uh, but first of all, I want to ask the guy who supports the winning team, Mr. Jordan Lu. How happy are you? Woo-hoo. Very happy. I almost... <laughs> no, but but legit, uh, the last goal, uh, I was not celebrating. Uh. I was like, that feels like. Oh, you were like, you were not celebrating, is it? Uh, and yeah, yeah. Uh, eh, looks offside. <laughs> yeah. So until the referee blows the whistle, there, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, but wow, bro! Like, yeah. Uh, Paul, how do you feel? The last goal. Uh, I mean, I can understand where Jordan's point of view is, like, because, like, you know, the suddenly the excitement taken away, yeah, because you because it looks offside on mm. uh, from TV, ma. But then yeah, when it goes through checks and all that, then as a, I think even from Jordan's point of view, is like you have to chill first, <laughs> wait until it's confirmed, you know. Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. I, it, it did. I mean, it did look offside, I mean, but then, yeah, yeah, when. The, when the replay show, I mean, there's yeah. a reason why the linesman like, didn't raise his flag. Yeah, so you yeah. Know, sometimes you have to trust them, also, you know. Yeah, like from when I was watching it right, yeah. live, uh, from the angle, the normal broadcast angle, I thought it was outside. Then, then when the, the VR, the ref was like holding yeah. it back, I was like, okay, maybe got chance. Uh. Then the whistle blow, I was like, oh, can already. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. who, well, we got a lot to unpack today, especially a lot of very, very good and key performances. Especially from the Arsenal side, uh. um, Josh, who do you think were the key players throughout the Arsenal game, or any standout performances that you that you saw throughout the match? Uh, like the whole team really yeah. played well uh, together. Uh, I must say that uh, Ateta is smart enough to bring bring out to sub out Ben White when he yeah. receives a yellow card, uh, because he uh, he needs a yellow like a, a player that got no yellow card to able to give tackles to yeah. Rashford, lah. Uh. So I think it's kudos to aesthetics lah. So uh, as well you ask, I think a few uh, players that 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 I think uh, can be the star players of the match. Uh, Eddie, he, he's been stepping up the place when Jesus uh is now yeah. injury. Yeah, and you can see him all over the pitch, all over the pitch as well. Then same as uh, Ajinjenko, Paul have been talking about him. Uh, all day, like he's everywhere. You can see, just just beasting his way through, yeah. And then, uh, the, but not the last, uh, Saka. He's like, wow, his day that shot was, I was not expected that go to, to go in. <laughs> but 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 this post goal say that he do have a chance that that DDG can actually can one can is it's those yeah. type of situations where. Wow, the he could have seen it later. Like he could have jumped earlier, lah. But switching over, uh, Paul, what do you think? How do you feel? I just feel right. Whoever said that Rashford is our player this season, uh, should just go and take a shower. Because <laughs> 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 clearly, the player that we need the most, right, is not Mike Rashford, but Casimiro. Yes, I agree. Yeah, I, I believe. I, I believe that. Mm. 
I mean, I know he got suspended, but I believe if he had played yesterday, we might have just stolen a point. Uh. Clearly, yeah. Uh, or maybe even... Uh, yeah, s- s- because we scored first, right? One new. Yeah, maybe we could have just hang on to, held on to the lead. But yeah, like, I, I, I agree with uh, Arsenal. Because I, 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 we all three of us were talking throughout the game, right? I already yeah. said from like the first five, ten minutes, I already see this in Jenko, right? Just being uh, like a... Teleporter, uh, everywhere, you know, everywhere in the in the field, yeah. <laughs> Especially like because he started at left back, right? But he played ninety percent of the time in like midfield. Eh. Yeah, oh, and his, ab- his ability to defend, attack, and like create plays, right? Is I think it's quite remarkable. Uh. Like he, I think they, they, they did a super good deal with uh, Man City, huh? Yeah, he 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 was super good, uh. he, he, yeah. he was super he was good like, throughout, throughout throughout the entire game. Was, yeah. yeah. And yeah, the Saka also. Whew. Yeah, one thing. But what I feel about Arsenal, right, it's like they, yeah. after watching them game after game, right, is that they are so well drilled, right, that even one or two players can play badly, the system does not fail, you know. Yeah, like Ben White. I agree. Like, you, like you see Ben White, yesterday, mm-hmm. he, he lunged into Rashford. So after that, he's been, he has to play a bit more conservative, right? Correct, correct. Yeah. And then Thomas Party made that mistake, but still able to maintain the system after after the, conceding the goal. So it's quite so it's quite mm. able to see that like nine the nine players can cover your back. Whereas when you look I, at United, <laughs> the moment one or two player plays off, the whole team <laughs> gets like <sighs> toppled, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And like to to me, I like I, I just want to hear you guys take on this, right? Like you could actually see the difference in terms of playing out from the back. Like for both for both teams. Uh, and the pace the pace and clarity, like in terms of moving the ball forward and everything. So I just want to ask your opinion. Uh. Even though Ramsdale and De Gea didn't like really touch the ball heavily or get involved, right? Do you notice a very big like confidence disparity between both of them? Or is it or is it just like just like it's just skill level? De Gea is not good on the ball. Uh. Like I said one thousand times. <laughs> 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 he cannot pass the ball. <laughs> but Ramsdale, I saw there was a there was a there was a he did a lot a diagonal ball to Martinelli, right? Yeah, I saw. Well, I was like, "Wow, that's how a goalkeeper uh, distribution should be." Yeah, yeah, like confident, yeah, clean yeah. and fast. But whenever you see the game, he always asks uh somebody to come into the the box to help him. Box. Yeah, but yeah, yeah uh, worst apart are definitely Arsenal and when you in terms of playing up on the back. Yeah, Josh, what do you think? But as a, uh, I think right that is like uh. Both sides, I mean, many are still not comfortable yeah. playing from the back. Because I think De Gea is uh, not really comfortable. But also, I think there's something that De Gea and the menu can learn from is Arsenal, if they can play from the back, they play from the back. But they don't force yeah. themselves to play from the back. You see, there's time that uh, Ramsdale pump the ball forward and then the midfield... Uh, uh, are ready to receive yep. the second ball. Like, yeah, and those 50 you know, 50 ball like, yeah. from the bounce so, and all that. Yeah, like, yeah correct. It's, so, so they are ready to receive. So, so that's how well they are trained. They are always prepared for what is to come. Yeah, what correct. Things to come. Yeah. So they have to, like, they have to read the game earlier. La. Correct. And it's like, it's very obvious, like, especially when you see, when you see, when you see, like, Party and Saka versus, like, McTominay and Ericsson. Like there'll be points when like during the game, uh, if Saka doesn't drop in between the defenders to get the ball, right, party will be there. Sometimes even Zinchenko will move will move will move yeah. into the middle, right? Then Man United, uh, Wow, only Ericsson, eh? I don't know where my dominant is. Eh? You shouldn't play in a game for this club. Wow. Wow. I, <laughs> is either he too far out or he's too, is, too stuck in the I, box? I don't know, uh, but I you guys uh, do you think like my dominant is like got no positional awareness? As a no, as a like, as a CDM, you need to impose your physical presence. Correct. Like Thomas Party and Granit Xhaka. But you see this McTominay. He went to where McDonald's. Ah. Uh. <laughs> 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 All right. Okay. Like, honestly, what? I would rather play Fred. I'll play. Right? Yeah, Fred and Ericsson. Yeah. I I would rather play Fred and Ericsson also yeah. because they're moving they're moving about and at least Fred has some positional awareness. Ah. Uh. There were so many times during the game, uh, and I think, and I don't know whether you guys caught this right, caught this right, is that when 
like the Gaia is like waiting for somebody to pass in, right? Usually Casimiro will pop up in, in front of him, like in between this in between like the two center backs, right? Mm-hmm. There's nobody there, right? Then Ericsson is off left. Eh? So Ericsson, mm-hmm. Ericsson is off yeah, the yeah, left, yeah, he's yeah, not yeah, in the center. One. So because he's off left, uh, there is one huge gap uh, that literally Arsenal can exploit. It's like basically it's like one box that any of the three midfielders or any of the two, the left wing and the and the and the striker can just go in to just just whack. Eh? It was ridiculous, eh? And like there's so much, there was so much space. Yeah. Uh. So to me, I, I looked at it and go like, wow, cannot. Uh. The yeah. you United need United need, need Casemiro, like, just like how important party and Saka is, right? And to me, uh, my my view is that with Arsenal, right? Uh, like if you remove, like let's say for example, if Party's injured or if Saka's injured, right? The other one can still cover, ma. You get what I mean? So like Saka can still hold it on his own, mm. Party can still hold it on his own. You can play Zinchenko like there, bro. Yeah, then plus Zinchenko <laughs> can slot in there, slot in there, slot in there also, right? United, uh, the moment Casemiro gone, uh, the whole thing gone. Eh. Like it's mm. a totally different team compared to okay. the team that play against Man City. So I'm like, mm. well. But I can say that this this uh this Man United is like. I think that the the start of the season when Mikel Arteta is like when he just yep. came in lah, like uh he need to he need to be fixated on the system yep. that he wanted. Those who can can sustain stays. Those who can like those who cannot have to start removing them yeah. a bit. So I would believe. I mean, so this season is is an open eye yeah, for ten club. Yeah. Then if players like McTom. Who else? Maguire. Fred might even have the chance to play, but maybe next season he'll be benched. Uh, yeah. Or something like that. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Then, like, they need to bring in new players that really can fit into his system. Yeah, I agree. So, I think, like, maybe, wow, there's a lot of things. Uh, so, at the end of the day, the final score, Arsenal 3, United 2. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Arsenal, man. yeah, I was going to talk about, right? Now, Arsenal is like 50 points at the halfway yeah. mark. And then, uh, they, they yeah, they can. They can. If they, they have to maintain like the same form now, they like they are have now, yeah. yeah. So they are five ahead of City, with a game in hand, right? So it's potentially yeah. eight, and we right, are they right. already already eleven ahead of us mm-hmm. with a game in hand. So, yeah. So Arsenal, Jordan, go go gun <laughs> go gun for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but because also, at this stage, also, I just feel that it's Arsenal to lose. Yeah, it is. Uh. Yeah, and it's not. It's not like uh, yeah, we can place. do anything about it. It's not with, in any other team's control. It's in fully in Arsenal's control. Yeah, so correct. And must remember, right? They haven't played City yet. Yeah. So so mm-hmm. once once Arsenal, uh, you just need to beat City once. Ah, uh, is uh, to me is as good as Arsenal to lose really. Uh. Even currently, it's as Arsenal to lose. Uh, you just need to beat City at least one time. Like if you you beat City once, you you then see the second game you draw. Uh, you're good already. Uh. You don't need to do anything already. Mm-hmm. You just need to, you just need to, yeah. just keep, keep that distance, that distance. Uh. Because the gap will grow to, to be quite big already. You all got to see, right? This Sir Alex and David Beckham was in the... Yeah. Yeah, bro. They were there. Yeah, bro. <laughs> the, the David Beckham son is Yeah, he's Arsenal, Arsenal fan, fan right? He or... plays for Nottingham, not, not Brentford, right? Is it? <laughs> I can't, I can't Yeah, remember. yeah, the Brooklyn Beckham or something. He plays for the... One of the EPL teams now. No, no, that one is that one is not Brooklyn. That one is uh Romeo Beckham. I think Romeo. That one I think Romeo. Either Romeo or Cruz. I can't remember. For for th- for those of you out there, if you know which Beckham is Beckham is beside David Beckham during the match, right? please let us know. <laughs> Beckham. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Yeah. That is it for the Man United versus Arsenal discussion. Or more the Arsenal versus Man United discussion, since Arsenal play home and Man United was away. All right. Moving on, next up, we will cover the Liverpool and Chelsea game. All right, now, the next game that we're going to cover is the other big game of the weekend, which is the Liverpool versus Chelsea game. Final score was nil-nil. Havertz had a, had a goal disallowed, and Chelsea had a bunch of numerous chances. But overall, it was pretty much a stalemate throughout, throughout the match. Uh, boys, what do you think? This, this Liverpool and Chelsea trying to fight for 9-10. Uh, eh? <laughs> 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 but yeah, when I saw the game, right? I saw parts, a bit parts and bits of the game, a bit 
hard to say who was the better team. Clearly, uh, I mean, Chelsea had uh, way more chances. Yeah. But Liverpool kept themselves in the game, lah. I felt mm. that. Yeah, and I always thought that Salah would mm. perform against Chelsea. Maybe just not this time round. Oh, he, was, he wasn't good. Yeah, he, <laughs> he, wasn't, was really and he wasn't playing well. Yeah. He, he, he wasn't quite bad. George, what do you think? Yeah, like Salah was quite atrocious. Uh. Like he kept mi- missing the shots. Keep like 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 playing rugby le, or, or or American football lah. Uh. Yeah, playing football lah. Uh. <laughs> uh, then this this young guy from Liverpool, bad shatik ah, uh. is from uh, the what the Liverpool academy yeah. Uh. Uh, like he don't really have much present lah. Uh. I find uh, like this, and then this Nabi Kieta took a while to get ah, into the game. Yeah, yeah, but he yeah. did do one very nice pass to Salah to Salah, right? Then Salah just sky the Salah. ball, uh. Yeah, uh, sky the yeah, ball. Sky I was like, ball. I was like, oh, it might be the that that standard Salah Salah go cut in to, cut in on his left foot, right? Then finish to the far corner, right? Then it's just like sky to the stand. It like out of nowhere, just like totally no chance mm. of getting on target, uh, on target. But overall, yeah. overall, I do think that. Mudrik played a good game, like the new the new signing. Like he was pressing, he was he was like trying to get the ball off, and I think it caused problems. Uh. what's your opinion? What do you guys think? A solid cameo. Uh. Then he came in. He he like tried to get the team ahead twice. Uh. like got two chances. Like got two chances. He, he, he tried to shoot, but both got signed. I think. Yeah. Like, yeah. Then one got caught off. Yeah, one got caught off. Right then. Yeah, he was destroying like James Mueller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, oh. I mean, it's, I mean, it's like the they, they were comparing him like a baby ha- Eden Hazard, you know, like the flashback. Yeah, yeah, because you can see that now why Arsenal wanted him so badly. Yeah, he's very fast. He's very quick. Then he can also, he also can win the ball quite quite quickly. Also, like like quite skillful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like to Modric is like walking in, uh, like a straw in the park. Like, Passing by yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. Then there was one there was one where he yeah, he dribbled right. past like, I think two 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 or three Liverpool players or so. Then he missed a shot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, then he yeah, missed a shot in the box. That was that was that was quite good. Uh, but wow. Hey guys. But yeah, speaking James of Mian, Liverpool, right? Yeah. I don't really know. Is it because they're missing Van Dyke or their midfield I issues still haven't been solved? Because they didn't start Fabinho and Henderson, eh? I think it's a a lot of different problems that they actually have to they actually have to rectify. Uh. Like for example, uh, like the Kai Havertz goal that was this a lot, right? James Milner is one lucky boy. Yeah, I mean, like super lucky. Eh. If he if yeah. he was just like one step closer to the closer to the goal, uh, that is hundred percent a goal already. Eh. Like he was the one that was playing that was that that was playing the whole thing the whole thing on side. He was super lucky. Eh. Alison is so safe, right? Yeah, Alison. Wait, wait, they Alison said. He hit the post, ah. Mm. Oh, he hit the post. I he thought, hit the I post. thought he, he, he touched it. No, no. Thiago Silva, the ball dropped. Then he hit the post. Then after mm. that, uh, Harvest stepped in. But at the point when Thiago made contact with the ball, right, Harvest was offside already. Mm. So if James Milner was in the mm. other direction, ah, hundred percent is a goal already, ah, goal already. But I think, uh, back to the question of like, what's wrong with Liverpool, ah, I think there's a lot of things that they need to sort. They, they really need to sort out, ah. Yeah, like, because, like, like in the past, defense, feel like, like maybe just last year or like the year before, whenever like Liverpool yeah. versus Chelsea, it's like you will put majority of your money on Liverpool. Yeah, yeah, and it's like it's like it's like a game to watch, you know, Liverpool versus Chelsea. Correct, but now yeah, uh, and, you go like, why? Well, it was uh, like, it was it wasn't really a game of two halves. It was it, it just felt that Chelsea lost like lost the game. Yeah, you know, same half. yeah, <laughs> Chelsea threw like, that the, the, the game that kind. Yeah. Correct, uh, correct, and. It's very sloppy, yeah. Uh, like, I think Mudrik, like he just when he came on, uh, he just target Trent. Tren. Like well, a few times, like he like mm. Trent, he was like just pressing Trent, right? Then he lost the he, then Trent lost the ball because Trent so didn't start. Of it, Trent didn't start, right? Milner started, uh, then they sub. Milner off. Yeah, they sub out, uh, But mm. but the thing, the fact uh, that you think about it, uh, you you start Milner over Trent, then you Trent come on uh, also like not much of a difference. Eh. Yeah, Same they, problem. I think just the the form of the Liverpool players haven't been been well. I feel. Korea, Korea. So I think we got to do a separate episode on this. I think there's a lot of things that we need to bring into because, for one, how long have been they been together as a team already? Yeah, seven years. Seven season. 
with club uh, uh, like an under like club under seven club. years already right it's club seven yeah, years some players are, are like here and there yeah which is like the, the Henderson court, Salah Muno Salah Robertson the main court is the main court is five years right uh, ish lah five to six you can just put that five the main court is about five years yeah. uh. the main court is about, about five years uh. so yeah. the difference between 20, 20, like the middle to late middle to like early 20s right to your early 30s <laughs> The legs are going already, lah. Because you, when you play, uh, that deep of a high intensity football, lah, you need that. You need legs, ah. Yeah, I find this this Liverpool need to fix uh, right back and get some solid midfielders, ah. Uh. Yeah, I yeah. do think I do think so. So, but yeah, the question, what the question now? I got a question. What we do with Trent now? You can still keep him, lah. You can still I keep him based on for yeah, his ball correct. distribution. It's just that you have to sort out yeah. the midfield first because they every other game they keep changing. They are either playing yeah. Henderson, Fabinho, Keita, Keita, Thiago, and this new guy, right? The ba- Bacha teacher. But then uh, we, it, we sh- mm. oh, sorry, sorry. And Point then also, like, yeah, they loan the Arthur also, then they don't use. Yeah, Arthur Jet. Mello, yeah. I Plus, I, I, after I heard, I heard the first yeah, few g- training Jet. sessions, <laughs> Klopp wasn't impressed by him. <laughs> Well, yeah. but yeah, so I, yeah, but right? I, I yeah, got this thought right. I got this thought right. Will you put Trent in midfield and buy another right back? Mm, that's what I can think. Uh, it's like I will still put him in right back. So if he's in weak, defending, weak in right back, yeah, then I'll just need to play with my formation and being uh, able to adapt. Like I push one of the CDM down to the right back to support if if uh Trent is up in the right midfield or or the right wing. So so right you will yeah. you, so, so George, the, I clarify. Uh, so you would rather keep the him in the same position, but just to find a a replacement for the midfielder lah to cover lah when when Trent bombs up lah. Mm, yeah. So like maybe you can get Jordan Henderson or whoever playing in a CDM role, just just shift more towards the right side. Yeah, like. A defensive coverage la, when he's up there because you know he tend to be yeah, really easy coming true. back that's true so so in the end yeah. right it's more do you think it's more of a midfield issue that, that they are facing now uh, I see both because currently my suggestion is only a temporary uh, uh, like a temporary one it cannot be uh, used yeah. throughout because definitely they need to come up with a system that really fits for everyone that, uh, yeah, like everyone is versatile and not, like, understand yeah, what they are doing. Understand. Uh. I, I do agree. Uh, but also, not having Van Dijk in that, in that game against Chelsea also did have some impact also. Uh. Like. But also Van Dijk this season also a bit off. Like, it's not his, his prime prime. Like, but it's, yeah. it's, like, it's, it's just like, with him, you stand a better chance. Yeah, yeah. It's, in, it's just having... In, yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. It's, it's also like just having the, pre- the presence yeah. of like VVD, just having VVD there. Because it's like big imposing. Uh, then mm. it's more like, okay, if I were to play against VVD, right, even though he's off form, right, he's still Virgil van Dijk. That, 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 that thing. So it's, I got to take mm. him into account. Uh. Versus if, let's say, for example, I'm playing against like Konate and Joe, Konate and Joe Gomez, right, I'll be like, oh, okay. I, there are ways that you can beat them, la. Yeah, so it's like your rock of the rock of your defense is not there. Then it's in the mind of the opponent. It's like okay, I got a chance to be, basically just go, have a go at them, right? And maybe just get something out of it, la. Yeah. So, mm, yeah, so so does the next question that I have uh, is that does this buy Graham Potter time with this draw or what? With this with result this draw with this result. I think what well, I think what Chelsea will do is they'll probably give him another one more month. You think it'll be a one more month? No, it's like a evaluation period. Uh. If he if he lose, how honestly can he lose another one month worth of games? Uh? Cannot, right? Cannot. Like, they won't allow that to happen. Cannot. Yeah. Correct. So if he pick up maybe three victories, let's start small like, Maybe first one or two small victories first. Then okay. Then at least the trajectory is looking good, ma. Correct. Correct. So yeah. now I think it's just more like he's. Managing for his job now, for the next one month. Survival first, though. Yeah. Survival first, uh. Survival first. George, what do you think? Yeah, but I think this, <laughs> this, uh, this 
support of Chelsea, like, like, like the Chelsea new new founder, right? Like keep throwing money <laughs> to buy new players. They, then they keep buying the same position. Eh? It's don't know. It's like he's trying to tell Paul, "Hey, I'm 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 buying new players for you. Or you 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 better buck up, or you just yeah, so they bought the this. They bought recently bought the what Mudue, yeah. Mudueki, right? Oh my! Yeah. There's another another wing. Like, they bought they bought two two three wingers, then a few defenders. Then uh, yeah, they never solved it. But then the question now is like, who's going out? But you buy so many uh, of the young, youngsters, right? There's somebody going out the door. Ziyech, Pulisic. Door. Yeah, Ziyech, Pulisic. Um, maybe uh, Sterling. How long? Is Sterling will still. I think Sterling will still be there. Yeah, you have to you have to get rid of the other few lah. Maybe Asper oh, Lequeta or this or so, so. I think Pulisic is out the door. Yeah, Pulisic and ZH. I think they are the ones that both of them in the market. Both of them are the door. The, they now you got Mudrik ah, and Sterling is on contract. Ah. I think they're going. Some of the wingers are going to go out the door. And then you got Enkunku right. coming in. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> bro. Enkunku, Sterling, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Mudrik, Mudriki, Havertz, Mount. <laughs> All these players are ah, is like. You don't know who is playing which at you don't know what position they're best at, you know. Come on, bro, you, you like you know you play FIFA, right? You play four five one. Then you got the two cam and the two cam bro, and the striker. Four two four and the left wing and the right wing. Four two four. I don't think it's four two four. Four two 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 two. I think it's I don't think it's four two two two. I think it's four five one. Four five one. Four four five one, right? Then then you put one you put one like midfielder there, right? You just stand there when you then everybody needs to attack. Everybody's in there. Okay. Yeah, Wait, let's let's see where this goes for Chelsea and for Chelsea and Liverpool over the next over the next one month. Um, I think down the line we're probably gonna do one one special episode about about Liverpool. Uh. So do keep an eye out for that. And now another piece of news. Let's talk about Juventus. <laughs> All right, boys. Now the big news that came out this week or so in the in a non on pitch setting was the Juventus 15-point deduction and banning from Italian football for 11 of its executives uh, for some for transfer scandals. Uh. Uh, what do you guys think of the news? Wow. This was quite quite big. <laughs> quite big. Not the first time this happened to Juve. Same old, same old, uh, yeah. old. Always, uh, Juventus is the... <laughs> <laughs> always in the limelight of the Italian football when it comes to transfer... Uh, tra- yeah, comes Juve. to point penalization and all that. Always, yeah, so uh, based on they didn't get relegated. Twice, uh. yeah. At least well, I remember relegation. the time when they got relegated. They a lot of players still stayed, right? Like Buffon. Yeah. <laughs> what a lawyer, uh, Buffon. But yeah, I think based on the, currently based on the recent news, right? Based on my what I, yeah. I I understand is they did some mishandling of the transfer transfer bet players, right? I, or like something to do with player swaps with other clubs. And, yeah. and as well as negotiating yeah, their yeah. salary. So I think they tried to do a lot of loopholes. Mm. Yeah, just yeah. from like, not even yeah. at the club level, it's like at, to the board level as well. Yeah, uh, as what Paul mentioned, saying the, the some swap, like player swapping, I think one of them, right, is Arthur Melo to Juve from Barcelona. <laughs> At oh yeah, I I remember that one. Euros. I remember that one. Then then they swap Pjanic to Barcelona for sixty million. You see, this Arthur Melo is when he's trans when he back in two thousand nineteen when he went over yep. to Juve, right? He's a, he's really thirty years old, right? And and it costs about seventy six yeah. million euros. So, yeah, so, so definitely try to launder some money. Uh, they they somehow maybe yeah, maybe yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. Well, but. And yeah, just speak, speaking of which, uh, yeah, speaking yeah, of which, some of the speak. executives that I, I mentioned, like eleven of them got banned, right? Yeah, one of them was Pavan Nevet. Eh? Then Nevet yeah. was yeah. also on the squad that was involved during that particular really, particular previous scandal that they had. Also, yeah, like, like I don't know what three years. Of I don't know what's going on, right, guys? But do you think this is like a innate problem with Juventus? Because it's not the first time already. Eh? I watched the documentary right, about the Juventus. Uh, yeah. Apparently, they have like, some Jordan dealings with the also. Italian mafia. Always. I'm sure this two times is nothing to them. Uh. It will be a you, did, you watch, did you guys watch the <laughs> Juventus the documentary very old? Like, yeah, the one I did. That, I did. Ab- yeah. About the, how they got yeah. relegated, right? Yeah. Yeah, so apparently they had yeah, yeah. dealings yeah. with the Italian mafia. Ma. That's why like the mafia will ask the referee to yeah. throw the game. 
or like be biased towards Juventus. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't know whether now they are still active, but for them to like what Jordan said, uh, spend seventy six million on a thirty year old midfielder, a bit suspicious, uh. Yeah, but at yeah. at that time, at that time also they also smart lah because if you think about it, right, you are playing the inflation game with football. Right? Like what a a midfielder a midfielder that yeah. will probably cost thirty 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 five million right cost you seventy to eighty million now also. So it's it's like if you really yeah. think about it, oh I paid seven I paid seventy plus million for this particular midfielder right who is of this stature right. Not many people actually blink an eye. Compared to compared to let's say it was, this was like two thousand and five two thousand and six two thousand and nine right. The, 2009 right when you pay 80 million for like Ronaldo that period uh, you pay another 80, 83 million for, for Gareth Bale uh, those are the things that go like wow it's eye popping uh. no uh, 2004 now, 2005 they paid 50 million for Zidane right? yeah so the thing is that 50 million like was Zidane, already, uh. Uh. yeah Zidane uh, that's Real Madrid uh. but the thing is those those type, of, those type of scenarios is like 50 million is already a lot right? mm. then you go to 80 million it's a, 80 million at that time is a lot of money but then when you come back to it now uh, it's it's like or is it like a standard transaction? Yeah. Is it like a standard transaction? Like yesterday, uh, the the number 21 on the right side of the field in a white shirt cost how much money? Paul? 100, 100 million. Enter me, enter me. Yeah, precisely my point. Uh. So, so, so it's, it's young. Uh. Yeah. You're paying more for the potential, but the thing is, your the yeah. thing is that like 80 million for a 30 year midfielder, right? Also, people won't really say much also. Uh. Cause he's like, oh, mm-hmm. prime midfielder, prime midfielder has a good track record to start things, lah. No, but Uv Uv had a very, had a very um, got they got track record of like buying players at at a at one of prices. They they bought. Yeah. You remember last time they bought Higuain for 80, 85 million. Was it 85? Then, mm-hmm. 80 million or something like that. sixty. I think it was seventy five or I remember it was. I can't, I can't remember the currency, but I, I saw it was around seventy to eighty million for Higuain, and then two seasons later they buy Ronaldo for hundred million. Yeah, they say they say this Ronaldo uh, uh was quite fishy also, like to cost hundred million. Yeah, over. because he was thirty. At that point of time, uh. three thirty four, right? Thirty two, I think. Yeah. Yeah, but it's still hundred million. Because he played right, three Ronaldo was still three seasons at UV, still like. form. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Prime. He played three seasons at UV, so about I think about thirty two, thirty three, like just after, and just this is just like this is like Champions League Ronaldo, like after he after yeah, he yeah, just yeah. won the his last his last Champions League. Uh. Oh, wow, yeah. a lot, a lot of things, a lot of things to. Yeah, oh, yeah. one of your fa- your your guys, your Ferrari, Maurizio Arriva Benny also got banned because he's uh, he's the yeah. former CEO of Juventus, right? Yeah, and if I'm not wrong, right? Uh, oh, you nah. guys can just look. You can just can look this up, but if I'm not wrong, right? Um, Fiat or I can't remember, or Ferrari, right? Is also owned by the same ownership, right? As UV. It's not the Italian. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it's like anything. So they can so technically they are they can be interchangeable also. But they move the money around. Uh. This is an Italian uh, job. I don't know, man. Uh, the the <laughs> we don't we don't make any assumptions right now. We are, we just think, I just think that this is is a stain on their legacy already, like moving forward. Already. Once once it's bad but, enough, but twice is another thing already. <laughs> but do you think it's like fifteen points is really like like a deserving uh, for them, or do you think that a ban or even to get relegated? I I think it's it's not as bad as compared to the previous one. The previous one, I think, it was more towards ma- match fixing. Yeah, match fixing and like mm-hmm. and like basically buying your way to a title. That one is that one is a definitely as a much more severe punishment. So in that context, based on the previous ban, uh, it is the the correct band to relegate them lah, and push them out thing, and also strip the mm-hmm. championship true, but true. I do think that for current one uh, for transfers 15 points uh, okay I, I think it's okay. I think it's I okay, think it's fair I think it's fair uh, what are, what do the two of you think do you think it's fair I think it's, it's to make a statement no? like to the other yeah. clubs that you, if you dare to try something like, I would, this is the thing that will happen to you right now you know they don't wait like the end of the season until then they investigate you yeah. straight up just deduct your points yeah. right now, you know. Yeah. Correct. So it was. Yeah, fifteen points is not was, too much, uh. I know currently they are at twenty-two points, uh, after the deduction, uh. 
So you you imagine, right, you were 37 points and you were closer to the top, right? Then now a five-point deduction, now you got to win another five. Eh? And hope ah, that the your your title opponents ah, lose five games each. Eh? Like, is is as good as you're, you're, you're out of the title race already. Like, you for mean, now, they, you, they just got to wait in for Champions League, ah, which is already, uh, far, for Champions League already. Far, quite, quite an impossible goal. Eh? Korea, Korea. You just got to aim for Champions League already. So maybe like next season is Europa for them. Never mind, uh, you Juventus. go you, you, Europa, you replace Barcelona and Man United. Uh, then you got another big name, go to Europa League. <laughs> <laughs> but Barcelona top of the league, how to... No, how as in... Cause currently, now they are in Barcelona. Currently, currently they are in now they're in Europa. Europa they're now they're oh, in Europa. Oh, uh. So your okay. big draw for the Europa League now right, is Man United versus Barcelona. Uh. So you if mm-hmm. next season right if both United and go, and Barcelona go to the Champions League, uh, then now your big draw is Juventus. Uh. Mm. I mean it could it could happen. Right. So let's just let's just look at that. Okay. Um that's it for our discussion regarding uh Juventus, right? Before we go off, uh any last words to say, boys? Oh no, I say <laughs> 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 Wow. You <laughs> ah. gotta give credit where credit is due. Lah. They played a very yeah. solid game. I, I mean, and as, much as, it, as much as it hurts me. Yeah. I was just at Jordan. You know, I was telling <laughs> Jordan, I was telling L, right? Well, well. He, he was telling me, like, how, how do I feel before the game? Then I was just saying, like, bro, I have no expectation. I just want to <laughs> yeah, see how that, it goes. That, 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 L, L was like, I, so I, I just, I'm not very scared. I said, I'm not very scared. I was like, wow, I'm not, I'm not very scared of this well, game. Well. <laughs> No, it's but the but if you really think about it, you know you ever you ever watch a game right, or before a game right, you have this bad feeling that your team's gonna lose. I had that feeling, bro, but I never say anything. <laughs> That's the thing, like like. I had a feeling. Oh, too. I also had a, you had a feeling. Had too, a feeling. Uh. I had a feeling too. Uh, yeah, it's just a pre-match too. nerves, <laughs> la, Yeah, but at yeah, least. Yeah. Well, but. Right. Wow. No, but I, to be honest, Arsenal had more to lose in the game. They did because at most we, we lose. It's like okay, you know, like we are still third. And we are already we, overachieving in this season, really. So, correct, correct. Yeah. So I mean, now, now, right? My as a United fan, uh, is Champions League, and then getting to the final of the of the League Cup, uh, Carabao, uh. So Carabao Cup, and mm. based on the luck of the draw, I think United should get to the final, uh, To me, lah. Uh. All right, so that is it for this episode of the Football Kaki. Uh, for those of you who are listening in, we just want to share with you our various shows that are actually going on as part of the Chit Chatter Podcast Network. If you want to hear some nice and cool and fun stories, do tune in to the Copy Bros, which is out every Monday. And of course, our game show, the SG Draft Podcast, which is out every Friday. So do give us a listen. And once again, thank you for joining us for this episode of Football Kaki. We'll see you next time next Wednesday and don't forget to just run the gaki. Mm-hmm.